At the beginning of the 20th century, the art world in Germany was thriving. Art groups such as Die Brücke or Der Blau Reiter were created with figures such as Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Erich Heckel, Emil Nolde, Franz Marc, and Wassily Kandinsky, who moved to Germany from Russia. Both were avant-garde groups, especially Die Brücke, which chose its name to represent the bridge between the art of the past and the art of the future. Now, let's take a look at three different artists from Germany and Austria, all born in the 1880s. The three of them will fight in World War I, which will greatly impact their lives. These are works they painted in 1914, right before the war. If you're subscribed to this channel, you probably recognize The Bride of the Wind by Oskar Kokoschka and Potsdamer Platz by Ernst Ludwig Kushner, both painted in 1914. The links to the videos on both paintings will be in the description. But one of these paintings is radically different. It was made by a young man that always wanted to be an artist, but failed. He tried getting in the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, but he was refused, not once, but twice. His works were considered, at best, postcards when compared to the much more popular German expressionists of the time. This led him to build a lot of resentment against modern art. His name was Adolf Hitler. When World War I was declared, the three artists volunteered to participate and they were all injured. Kirchner had a mental breakdown in 1915 and he painted self-portrait as a soldier. He paints himself in his studio, in his military uniform, and with his hand cut off. The amputated hand was a metaphor. The traumatic experience of war was hindering his artistic development. Oskar Kokoschka was hated by the establishment. Archduke Franz Ferdinand said of him, this fellow's bones ought to be broken in his body. In 1914, Ferdinand's murder would spark World War I. Kokoschka was also injured in 1915. He was shot in the head and stabbed in the lung, but still managed to survive. Hitler was blinded by mustard gas, and while recovering, he learns that Germany was defeated. He was furious. Out of the three men, Hitler was the only one who enjoyed the war. After World War I, Kokoschka and Kirchner continue to paint while Hitler creates the Nazi party. It grows in popularity and, in 1931, it closes down the Bauhaus, an influential art school in the city of Dessau. It reopens in Berlin in 1932, but it's closed once again in 1933 by the Nazis. This is where the concept of degenerate art becomes important. Nazis started using it to alienate modern artists, especially expressionists. It was used to make Germany hostile to them. In 1931, Kirchner paints another self-portrait. His hands, once again, seem restricted. Half of his face is smudged in the shadows, and finally, the wallpaper in the background seemed to be representing a swastika. In 1934, Kokoschka flees Austria after being labeled degenerate and paints in 1937 self-portrait of a degenerate artist. The same year, Kirchner wrote, Here we have been hearing terrible rumors about torture of the Jews, but it's all surely untrue. I'm a little tired and sad about the situation up there. There is war in the air. In the museums, the hard-won cultural achievements of the last 20 years are being destroyed, and yet the reason why we founded the Brücke was to encourage truly German art, made in Germany. And now, it is supposed to be un-German. Dear God, it does upset me. Indeed, in 1937, the Nazi state seized over 15,000 artworks considered to be degenerate. 634 of them were made by Kirchner. 759 were made by Erich Heckel, another founding member of Die Brücke, and finally, 1,052 were made by Emil Nolde. Nolde was also a member of Die Brücke. He was a very well-known artist who joined the Nazi party when it had just started. Still, Nolde was deemed degenerate and the Nazis made it illegal for him to paint in 1941. He was even prohibited from owning art materials. 
The Nazis decided with this newly acquired art to make an exhibition, but not just any exhibition. They decided to make a derisive exhibition. 650 artworks were selected and exposed to be laughed at and ridiculed. Nolde had the most paintings on display with 27, and he was surrounded by many degenerate artists from across Europe. Of course, there was Kirchner, Kokoschka, and Heckel, but there was also Kandinsky, Chagall, Mondrian, Matisse, Picasso, Van Gogh, Munk, Dix, and more. This exhibition was displayed next to the Great Exhibition of German Art, which consisted of artworks that the Nazis approved of. This way, the visitors of both exhibitions could compare the good and the bad art. The degenerate art exhibition was humiliating. It was designed to put the paintings in a bad light. Some artworks were hanged crooked, some weren't even framed, the rooms were too small, and some slogans were written on the walls, such as, Nature is seen by sick minds, or Madness becomes method. The Nazis wanted to kill degenerate artists, not by executing them, but by revoking their titles, by convincing the public that they weren't artists. The degenerate art exhibition was a trial. The defendants were accused of creating worthless paintings, objects that were an embarrassment to German culture, an embarrassment to the German people. The accused were labeled madmen, ill, un-German, Jewish, or Bolsheviks. All of these terms were pretty much interchangeable to Nazis. The following year, in 1938, Austria is annexed by Germany and Kirchner, who lived in Switzerland, was afraid of an approaching Nazi invasion. Out of fear, he decided to destroy his own paintings. He preferred that alternative to seeing the Nazis burn them. Kirchner's mental state kept degrading and, finally, the Nazis' continuous growth led him to commit suicide. Works of art which cannot be understood in themselves but need some pretentious instruction book to justify their existence will never again find their way to the German people. These are Hitler's words, but I feel like we've all heard similar statements in our entourage. Modern art does run the risk of alienating a large part of the population, which, in return, may hate it. This is why making modern art accessible is very important. If people are not given the tools and the knowledge to appreciate it, they may end up going at war against it. Thank you for watching. We'd like to thank Isak and every other patron for supporting us.